Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This time I'm going to be taking a look at histograms. In particular, we're going to look at how to approach these questions and then I've got three exam questions. Now it was actually requested for me to do this video on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I update regularly there. Uh, the link's in the description for that. Okay, so let's crack on. So histograms, I think people are under the illusion that they're a bit tricky, but as soon as you understand this formula here, this blue one, and what it actually represents, then you'll be able to do every single type of problem. So the formula is, the frequency density, which is always on the left hand side here, is equal to the frequency, or the number of things, number of people in this case, number of things divided by the class width. Now the class width is how long the bar is. So. As I've said here, the frequency, what it actually means, is the area of each bar, because we can rearrange this blue formula to give frequency equals frequency density times class width. Right, and if we take a look at this first bar, for example, without even looking at the question, we can see that whatever the frequency density is on the side, and whatever the class width is on the bottom, when we multiply them, we're going to get the frequency, and that is the area of the bar. Okay, great. So, again, if you're not fully sure on histograms, we're going to be taking a look at a few examples. So let's get straight on. Right, so here is some information about a tennis club. There are 30 members with A less than 20. There are 12 members with 65 less than 80. And there are no members with a bigger than 80. Right, so the first thing we need to do is work out the frequency density scale. To do this, right, the first bit of information, we're told that there are 30 members with A less than 20. So that means the frequency of this bar is 30. So this tells us that 30 equals whatever the frequency density is for that times and then the class width in this case is 20. Right, and that's because this is the class width here. It goes from 0 to 20. Okay, and we can rearrange this. So frequency density equals 30 over 20, and this is 1.5. So this means the distance from here down to 0 is 1.5. Right, so this means that this here is 1.5, and because we're going up three squares, this tells us that this must be 0 0.5 and that this is 1. So we figured out our scale. So 1 square is 0 0.5 in frequency density. Right, great. So we can now fill in the rest of this scale. Right, so we're told to complete the histogram as question 1. So we've completed the frequency density scale, good. We're told there are 12 members with 65 less than or equal to A less than 80. So that's going to be from here. So from 65 to 80 is there. So we're gonna have a bar there. We're told there's 12 members. So the frequency is 12. And the class width is 15. So this tells us that the frequency density equals 12 divided by 15 and you can simplify this however you want it's 4 fifths which is 0 0.8 right so now all we have to do is draw a bar that goes up to 0 0.8 so if one square is 0 0.5 then we just need three little squares so it should look something like that and there are no members with A bigger than 80, so that's fine. So our histogram is completed. And we know the frequency there is 12. Right, part B, work out the total number of members of the club. So all we have to do is find the frequency of these three bars, right? So just need to differentiate them. So let's call it bar 2, which is this one. So I'll put a number 2. So bar 2. Right, its frequency density is 
and its class width is 10. Right, and we know that frequency equals these two multiplied, so frequency equals 45. Okay, great, so we can write that on. This is bar number three, and this is bar number four. Okay, so bar number three, so our frequency density is 3.6. Again, just reading up the side. See, all the work in this question was really done in part A. And the class width is, again, 10. So frequency is these two multiplied, which equals 36. So I'll write that on. And finally, bar 4, the frequency density in this case is 2. Just reading up the graph there. And the class width is 25. So the frequency is these two multiplied, which is 50. OK, now the total, let's do it down here. We just got to add up all the frequencies. So we've got 30 plus 45 plus 36 plus 50 plus 12. And if you add up all of these very carefully, you will get 173. So that is the answer for part B. OK, so this is our second question. It's getting a little bit trickier now. So the histogram shows information about the speed of cars as they pass a checkpoint. The scale is missing again. So just like in question one, we had to figure out the scale for ourselves. The histogram shows information about 480. How many cars does the first bar represent? Well, this time we're not actually told, we're not actually given information about the frequency of each bar. So we've got to do something a little bit clever. So the frequency density, we don't know what it goes up in. So how about for each square it goes up in, let's call it x. OK, so this would be x. The next square it would go, go up, it's gone twice as much as the first one. So this would be 2x. Third square is three times as much, and so on. And 7x. Now, no, we're not, we're not actually saying this is the frequency density. We're just saying. We need to work out what x is to get the scale for the frequency density. OK, so that's a good start. How many bars does the first one represent? So that's this one here. Well, the class width, we can read that. It goes from 15 to 30. So the class width is 15. The frequency density is, well, it goes up to 5x. So that's good. And so we can make this little expression for the frequency. So we can say the frequency is 5 times 15x, uh, sorry, 15 times 5x, which is 75x. Okay, this histogram is complete, so there are no more bars to add. So this is bar one. Bar two, let's have a look. Okay, the class width is five. And the frequency density, so we just got to count this carefully. So it's in between 6x and 7x, and because there's five squares in between 6x and 7x, that means each square represents 0.2x. So the frequency density for this is 6.6x. Right, and if we multiply them together, we get the frequency, which is 33x. Okay, and the final bar, which is this really small one down here, bar 3. The class width is 15, again. The frequency density this time, well, it's 4 squares out of 5, so it's 4 fifths of x, which is 0 0.8 of x. And again, multiplying these together, we get 0 0.8 times 15 is 12, and we've got an x. Right, good. What do we also know? Well, we also know that there were 480 cars in total. So the total frequency is 480. But this means that 75x plus 33x plus 12x equals 480. 
Okay, and we can simplify this up a little bit. 75 plus 33 is 108. Add 12, we get 120. So 120x equals 480. So finally, we can divide by 120 on both sides to give us x. 480 over 120, and this is 4. Okay, so now we can replace this scale here. Right? We know that now each square represents 4 cars. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and so on. That's all we need to go. So let me clean this up and then we will carry on with the question. Okay, brilliant. So what have we done? We've worked out the scale on the axis, on the y-axis. So now, back to the question, how many cars does the first bar represent? Well, if you remember, it was 5x times 15, but we now know that x is 4. So we just need to work out the area of this rectangle, and it's 20 times 15, which equals 300. So the answer to part A is 300 cars. Good. Okay, part B. Cars with a speed greater than 40 miles an hour are over the speed limit. So anything over here is over the speed limit. Use the histogram to estimate the number of cars that are over the speed limit. Okay, firstly what we need to do is work out the frequency for bar 3. So I'll just put F for bar 3. Okay, so if you remember this was 12 times X, which is 48 cars. Right, so this bar here represents 48 cars in total. But look what the question's asking. It's asking anything over than 40. So basically chopping off this part of the bar. So we want 40 to 50, but we have 35 to 50. Now hopefully you can see that what we've actually chopped off here is two-thirds of the whole bar. So two-thirds of whole bar. So all we need to do now is do two-thirds of 48, which is 32 cars. So that's our answer for part B. That's the number of cars that are over the speed limit. And remember, that's just an estimate. Okay, final question. Uh, and this one's quite tricky. It uses some other methods. But this time we don't have to work out the frequency density scale. So 48 students completed some homework. This histogram shows information. Work out an estimate of the interquartile range. Now I'll remind you, the interquartile range equals the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. And I'll explain what these are when we get to them. But firstly, let's work out some frequencies. So again, I'm going to call this one bar 1. So for bar 1, the frequency density equals 1.6 and the class width equals 5. So the frequency equals these two multiplied, which gives us 8. Okay, for bar 2, the frequency density equals 0.8. The class width equals 10. So again, the frequency is these two multiplied, which is 8. Which is 8. Next, bar 3. So 3, the frequency density is 1. 1.2, the class width is 10 again, so the frequency is 12. And finally, bar number 4, the frequency density is 1, the class width is 20, so the frequency is 20. Now you should spot that all of these add up to 48, which is good. Okay, the interquartile range, so we need to work out the upper quartile. So we have 48 in total. And we're going to divide by 4 to find the lower quartile. So it equals the lower quartile position, which equals the 12th value. So we need to find which time, so which value along here, contains the 12th value. So we know there's 8 in here, because we worked out the frequency of the bar. We also know there's 8 in here. Now to get to 12, we need to chop this bar in half. And this takes us to 10. So that's 10, 10 minutes. 
Very good. To find the upper quartile, we do 48 divided by 4 and then times by 3. So this is the upper quartile position, which equals the 36th value. Right, to find the 36th value, one thing we can know is that the class, because the class width is the same as the frequency, class width is the same as the frequency, so each frequency represents a time. We can sort of estimate this. And because we need to get from 28 to 36, all we do is add 8 onto 25. So add 8. So hopefully you can understand that. If you don't, let me know and I'll try and explain it a little bit better. So it's 25 plus 8, which equals 33. Right, hence the IQR equals 33 take away 10, which is 23. Okay, fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed this video on histograms. Any more requests, do let me know. Thanks very much.